Good morning, guys. We've been waiting for a morning like this because it was a little overcast in the morning and we were a little late to the game in filming and giving you an update on the first garden bed that we had ever planted. So this was our shade garden bed and it went through two iterations. So if I could just recap, as I'd mentioned, this was the first garden bed that we actually had planted. And there was really only three plants in this whole bed. It was this Acer palmatum, it was this abies, this kind of creeping abies, and we had this Pinus strobus, probably pendula or some type of weeping white pine. And that was it. Those were the three species that we had here. This was really spreading, so was the Pinus, to the point that in the second iteration of this garden, which you'll see is a little bit sparsely planted, is because we actually only extended this, because obviously the, the pathway was actually through here under this pine and we kept on hitting our heads on it. So I think it was in September, if I'm not mistaken, we ended up uh, carving out the pathway and reframing where this pathway would go. And please mind the path because that is still a project that we need to do. We're going to change it and take all these bricks out. But I think what's cool about it is that you'll notice early in the season, we planted this side. Late in the season, we planted this side. So you could still see some of the mulch here, as you could see, but you can't really see the mulch over here, right? So it's really filled in and Again, I had mentioned this in some of my other garden plantings, but I really like to bring on full diversity in these beds, no matter how big or small. And if you could believe it, even though you won't be able to see all the plants at once, this bed now has, it went from three species to over 60 different types of species and varieties of plants, many of them native. So ones that are very uncommon that you wouldn't really think about like we do have a native sedum here. So most of our sedums come from like the Himalayas and other cold parts of the world. But this is a sedum, woodland stone crop, that grows native here. And you know, it's not so showy, but I really love this kind of lime green. And you'll see that throughout. This is Gallium odorata. Now this is not our native Gallium, but it's a good spreader. I wouldn't recommend it in a bed where you don't want it to spread, but it is something that is perfect for filling in the gaps. And it's not a total beast, like, or bully. If you plant lots of different varieties of plants with it from the get-go, then it will play nicely with them and kind of fill in around them. So you'll see that these uh, Tiarellas are actually like playing nicely with it. You could see this is a Cornus canadensis. So this is this one, it spreads rhizomatously. This is a geranium, purple ghost. Let's see what else I could find in here. This is some Galtheria procumbens. This is a creeping raspberry, an Arctic raspberry. This is a type of Korean violet called heartthrob. So there's lots of different types of things that you could actually see in here.
And what I like about this is this Abies has all this new growth and it's like this lime green growth that's coming up on this uh, plant. And that doesn't obviously last forever, but for the moment right now in May, you'll be able to see that lime green come through here. And because this is a shade garden, I mean, yes, it's illuminated with the Eastern light right now, but because it's a shade garden for most of the day and it doesn't have light on for most of the day, this lime green really like is uh, incredibly vibrant. Now, one of the plants that I really fell in love with and I went kind of crazy and I kind of planted it all along the edge is this one. It's geranium samabor. And the kind of theme that I wanted to go with this garden is I, I took off the color cues of this Acer palmatum, which you could see is like this red, but it has this like purplish tinge to it. So I was like, okay, well, what plants actually have that color palette that I could bring over here, whether it's in their flower color palette or whether it's in their leaves. And literally this is like a spicy <laughs> lettuce mix. Um, and then these are hookarellas or hookaras, which again is based off a native plant. I have actually a native, native hookaras planted in here as well, but I have some cultivars and some of these Korean violets, I think this one's called styletta, actually has purple underside. So some of that color on the plants is actually playing off the color of that Acer palmatum. And even those dicentra over there, those bleeding hearts, with the little red heart dangling with a little white element from the heart, plays off that color of the Acer palmatum. So I really took those looks and brought that throughout the theme of this bed. Even this Pyrrhus japonica, not a native, I think it's called flaming silver. The new growth actually comes out red. Now you're not seeing any of the new growth, but it comes out this kind of reddish purple. And this Moodkenia right here, it's a cross between two plants. Look at that beautiful pink red straw flower. So you see that, that theme throughout. Cornus canadensis, this has the white bracts right now matching a lot of the white flowers. So I went a little bit more subdued with the flower colors and you know, obviously whites and pink reds, but this will produce red berries that are edible for wildlife. The Arcostachys right here, this is a creeping sprawler native that will actually produce red berries. This winter green will produce red berries as well. And even the creeping Arctic raspberries, they get like pink flowers, the cutest pink little flower, and they'll actually produce raspberries. So this is also a nice little wildlife corridor for a shade garden. We went from three plants that were not producing very much food for any wildlife to multiple plants that are producing for wildlife, which I'm, I get really excited about. And you may catch a glimpse of our fellow chipmunk running back and forth. And I put a little water dish behind there, but he uses this, he goes under our little stairway here and actually runs through underneath all this, all these plants, which actually protects him as well. And I've noticed some sunflower seeds actually coming up in between the cracks and crevices of the plants. But that actually brings me to a really important point. I love filling a bed with plants to the point, like I said, that you're not going to see any more mulch. So again, I think within one more season, we'll see probably the Gallium odoratum and the uh, Cornus canadensis actually spread throughout here and fill up the bed. And when that happens, you really don't have to weed your bed anymore. It's very rare that seeds from quote unquote weed plants, whether it's a dandelion or something you don't wanna see growing in your bed, uh, will, will actually grow. So that's something that I wanna do, even though this seems like a high maintenance garden due to the fact that there's just so much planted in it, it's actually strangely a low maintenance garden. Now let's talk about some of the other shade plants that we could actually identify and see in here. Because quite frankly, I don't, I don't, I can't recall every single cultivar species that I have planted, but if you see in here, we have some trilliums. So we went and did a really beautiful trillium tour and we have a few different species of trillium in there. You'll see one that's 
about to bloom right here. And then you'll see this, this is Asarum canadense. This is actually a great native plant that will also spread. Now you'll see Asarums that have more silvery tops that aren't native, and they're also very beautiful. And I could actually, you know, bring some of those in here, but I wanted to keep with Asarum canadense. And then you'll see a columbine. It has one little white flower that's there still. And then right in front of it, with the kind of a feathery flowers right here. That's one of our native hookahs, actually. So that is what a lot of these plants have been developed from. And there has been so many cultivars of hookahs. It's a very popular plant among shade gardeners. And you get a lot of color from those plants just from the leaves alone. But and they get very similar, similar flowers to this. And sometimes you'll get very different colors. You'll see like this one has more pink colors. And I believe that one I'm pointing to is actually a hookarella. So that's, oh, hey, Chippy. So that's between a hookara and a tiarella. That's a, that's a, I think it's an intergeneric mix. Or if it's in the same, yeah, it's probably an intergeneric mix between two different genera. Anyway, I'm, I'm very pleased with how this is turning out. I spent like 15 minutes on this bed gar, uh, weeding. Af, um, this season. So that that to me says this is a, a fairly successful garden. And I love looking at how the topography is forming here. And again, we're kind of taking inspiration off the three plants that were planted here. So you kind of see this kind of hilly look to the plants if you step back, especially with this prostrate uh, spruce, kind of really low lying. And so I wanted to kind of take that inspiration with some of these plants and bring back a slightly bushy plant with the pyrus, which will get really beautiful flowers that remind me a little bit of um, blueberries, but the rest will kind of stay small and low so it doesn't overtake this beautiful pinus right here. And honestly, if anything pushes out into the walkway, it's going to be this gallium odorata. And when we remove this walkway, if, it, if that starts pushing out into the walkway a bit, I wouldn't be so angry about that. It's a really beautiful kind of pathway plant. Now we have more plants planted under here, underneath the skirt, if you will, if I lift the skirt of the Acer. And some folks asked, well, why did you, why did you plant underneath the skirt of the Acer? See, this is Canada, um, Sanguinaria canadensis. This is bloodroot. And another of cornice and some gallium and some Japanese painted fern, which again, that color of that purple and that red and some of that elements of like this blue green hue really pops out. Yeah, so folks asked, well, why did you plant underneath the skirt of the Acer? Well, just two weeks ago, this had no leaves, but the ephemerals like the trillium and the cornus canadensis and a number of others actually were blooming and that's the time that they do bloom is before the trees actually put out their leaves so you could actually see some beautiful green and whites and other colors before this pumps out its leaves which you can't even believe that two weeks ago this didn't have its leaves but it, it just didn't but that's how quick things tend to push out when conditions are right in the spring. That's part of what makes spring so beautiful and so inviting. So this is just a little tour of how this garden is doing. And I really hope that before the end of the year, we actually get to finish the pathway. So, cause right now I think the pathway really detracts from the beauty of this garden and this entrance path, but we have to just put one foot in front of the other here and work a little bit at a time. But this to me is just wonderful progress.